Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25, and we'll begin reading at verse 18. We'll read verses 18 through 28. Proverbs chapter 25, and we'll begin reading in verse 18. And I've titled my message, The Importance of Self-Control. The Importance of Self-Control. And we'll begin reading in Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 18. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man in the time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather and as vinegar upon nitre, so is he that singeth songs to a heavy heart. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. The north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. It is better to dwell in the corner of the host top than with a brawling woman in a white house. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and as a corrupt spring. It is not good to eat much honey, so for men to search their own glory is not glory. Verse 28 is where we'll be at this evening. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, again, Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for your word and guiding us and directing us. And Lord, I just pray you take this simple truth and help us to apply it to our lives. Help us to learn from this proverb this evening to be more like you. Again, Lord, we just pray in each and every aspect, you be glorified, we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. For some, the motto is whatever will be, will be. And their practice is whatever I feel like doing is that that's what I'll do. Whatever I want, that's what I get. Uh, the life, the way they live it is to fulfill the moment, to fulfill their desires. But the word of God does not teach us that practice. The word of God teaches us the importance of self-control, the importance of doing what we ought to do and not what we want to do. And uh, the way we have self-control and the way we live the, the, the life we ought to is found, made possible by the word of God. As we consider this passage, doing what you should do is more important than doing what you want to do. We all had the temptation to be lazy as an example. And what I mean by that I, is when I wake up in the morning, I don't always want to work. I don't always want to be being busy. I don't want to be doing what to, I ought to do. The natural part of me wants to relax, take it easy, and do what is comfortable. But God's Word does not teach us that that is how we are to live our lives. The Word of God teaches us the importance of diligence, the importance of rising up early, the importance of focusing on the task at hand and doing what the God has given to do, us to do with all our might. God's word says the following in Luke chapter 17 and verse 7 and following. You don't have to turn there, I'll read it. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meat, and will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me. I have eaten and drunk, and then afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant, because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. The Bible also says the following in Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 and following. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh of thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away." God's word teaches us that we're to do more than is asked of us. God's word teaches us that we're to go the extra mile. 
The Word of God says when we have done which is our duty to do, we are to say we're unprofitable servants. We're to go the extra mile. We're to stand uh, out from the crowd. And you say, how is that possible? I thought we're not to rest in our own strength. We're not to do all these in our own strength. And that is true. You can't do these things in your own strength. You'll become very grumpy or a very very bitter person if you're doing these things in your own strength. If you're doing these things just to please people or you're doing these things just in order to do them because you know that's what's required of you and you're not doing them because you know this is what God wants you to do and you're doing a service of love, then you're not going to be able to do these things. You'll become weary in well-doing. The Bible says we're not to become weary in well-doing for in due time we shall reap if we faint not. The way we progress forward is by relying upon the grace of God. We learned about that on Wednesday. The way you serve God is by trusting in God to give you the strength for what you need to do. The way you serve God is by relying upon him to give you the ability and the wisdom to do what you need to do. And there is a number of ways that this is provided. The labor that we labor needs to be a labor of love. And this is dependent upon the grace of God in one's life. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I know what the idea is there. When I learn not to depend upon myself and I learn to depend upon God, then I have strength. When I learn not to try to do everything and all these things just so I can have these things and be done my duties for the day, and I learn I'm doing this because I love my Savior, it will help me move forward. When I learn the reason as to why I'm doing what I ought to do, it will enable me to be all I need to be, but that's going to take self-control. And why do we need self-control? Well, there are many things we need self-control for, but the, self, the way to self-control is found not in self-determination for our own selfish reasons. It is found in yielding to the Lord, and this is done through prayer. It's done through prayer. It's done through the reading of the Word of God and us obeying. Jesus said, that the flesh is weak and the spirit is willing. He said, pray ye therefore. We need to learn in the Christian life, if we're going to make it and not become broken and not fail in the Christian life, we need to learn that we need to spend time in prayer before God. We need to take that time, set it apart, and ask God to help us for the day. We need to read the Word of God. We we can't just sit idly by and expect the blessings of God to fall upon our life and us be able to do what we ought to do if we're not reading the Word of God. And we need to obey the Word of God. We might sometimes get involved in prayer, and we get involved in the reading of the Word of God, but it becomes a routine instead of being real. What I mean by that is we do it without thinking about it. And God wants us to be involved in it. He wants us to think about what we're doing. In order for us to move forward, in order for us to have self-control, we need to know that from the beginning, that we need to rely upon God in order to do this, in order to have that self-control. But as we consider that, as we understand that, let us look at that verse again. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. The first point I have this evening is one must rule their own spirit. One must rule their own spirit. You will have feelings and desires to do wrong and do what you want to do instead of doing what you ought to do. We read this in the book of Romans. That what I I would do, I do not, and that's what I would not, I end up doing. I'm paraphrasing that, but what the Word of God is telling us is there's a battle going on, and we need to make a decision. Who's going to win? Are you going to win or is God going to win? Are you going to yield to God and his grace in your life? Are you going to allow God to take control? Or are you going to say, you know what, I'm going to take control right here and now. And if we're in that place in our life where we're not yielding to God, we're not listening to God, we're not going to allow him to take control, it's going to end up hurting us and not helping us. And God wants us to have that control over our own spirit. Sometimes we feel like disobeying our authority. We don't want to disobey our teachers. We don't want to obey the laws of the land. We don't want to obey the speed limit. It's too slow. 
We don't want to be doing certain things in our, our life. But God teaches us that we need to submit, yield. And the reason being is it brings glory to God. And the reason being is that it will help us. It will not hurt us. It is what is best for us. Sometimes we wish to be lazy and not involved in the work that the Lord has provided us with. But we need to practice self-control. Turn your Bibles to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll begin reading it in verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll begin reading in verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll begin reading it in verse number 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us the glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. And beside this, giving all diligence, Add to your faith virtue, and the virtue, knowledge, and the knowledge, temperance, and the temperance, patience, and the patience, godliness, and the godliness, brotherly kindness, and the brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. For an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have many promises and privileges as Christians. But nevertheless, the word of God says, giving all diligence. You have all these things, but giving all diligence adds to your faith. Virtue, knowledge, temperance, and the list goes on. And what God's word is saying is practice self-control in your life. Take control. Do what you know you're supposed to do. Don't sit idly by. Don't allow yourself to become idle. Become involved in the Christian life. Become involved in the work that God is trying to do in your life. It's easy to just look at life and allow life to go a certain way, and we'll learn the consequence for doing that. But what God wants us to do is to have rule over our own spirit. He wants us to be in control. We must practice obedience and serve our master. Self-control is important because it protects us from doing what is wrong. The Bible says the following in Proverbs chapter 4, Verse 23 and following, you don't have to turn there and I'll read it. The Bible says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth. Let this be your practice. Make this a part of your life, self-control. And perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. The Bible says we're to keep our heart with all diligence, for it are the issues of life. The way you live and who you are comes from within. And the Bible says keep your heart with all diligence. And then it goes on to give us a list of what we need to do. It says put away from you a froward mouth, uh, perverse lips, remove it from you. It says, let thine eyes look right on, let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder thy path of thy feet. Uh, What God is saying, look at what you're doing and why you're doing it. As you go through life, consider what you're doing it and who you're doing it for. Don't go through life and just one step after another, just routinely go through it, but think about it. Why are you doing what you're doing right now? Why are you going to do tomorrow what you're going to do? Why is it that you go to work and you give your all? These things we can do in the flesh. We can get involved in just doing it just because. But God wants us to do it in the spirit. 
He wants us to do it in the power of his might. He wants us to do it with a a thought and an intent, I'm doing this to serve my Savior. And so we must realize that in order to be a city with walls, a city that is standing and when people walk by, it's not destroyed, in order to be that city that is beautiful so that when people walk by, they they look at your life and say, look at that city. Look how great their walls have been built. Look at what's occurring in their life. Look at their life and what has occurred. In order for us to be that precious city, that precious building, we need to rely upon the Lord and serve him. We need to practice self-control. We must have rule over our own spirit. And then there's the next point. No rules means no protection, or a lack of self-control leads to destruction. When you do whatever you want to, you become like a city without walls. This means you're open for the enemy's attack. And you say, who is and wants to attack me as a Christian? Who is it that is out there seeking whom he may devour? Who is that roaring lion that walks to and fro? His name is the devil, Satan. He is looking for you to let up in the Christian life. He's looking for you to become lazy. He's looking for you to lack self control. There's not even, not only the devil, there's also the world, your own flesh. Everything is looking for an opportunity to tear down those walls in your life. And that is why God teaches us the importance of this self-control. The world and the devil will be attacking you and they'll encourage you to do wrong. They'll encourage you to destroy that, that precious city that you're trying to build. Turn your Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24, and we'll be in reading in verse 30. Proverbs chapter 24, and we'll begin reading in verse 30. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30, I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little slumber, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. This truth is true for the working man in this world, but it is also true when it comes to spiritual matters. This applies to the poverty in the natural realm and the spiritual. When one neglects his spiritual needs, is not involved in prayer, not involved in the reading of the word of God, they're not involved in attending God's hosts in these last days. The Bible says we're to attend and so much the more as you see the day approaching. When people are not involved in the spiritual aspect of life and they begin to just sit idly by and become lazy, a little sleep, a little slumber, before they know it, before they realize it, their life begins to crumble spiritually. The neglect leads to decay, even to the extent that one may be even forget that he was redeemed by the blood of the Lord. They forget. God has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 9 and following, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly, into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you don't control your spirit, and there's no wall around you, and things begin to decay, you're not involved in prayer, you're sleeping. I'm reminded of the book of Ephesians where it says, Awake thou that sleepest, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give thee light. God is waiting for us as Christians What God wants from us as Christians is to wake up, look around, be involved in the spiritual battle. 
Not sit idly by, but practice self-control. You will make a choice in your life, and there's no doubt about that. We make choices every day. But some choices have, excuse me, all choices have consequences. Some for the better, and some for the worst. Some is what is best, and some it's okay, but not what is best. But we need to practice what is best in the Christian life. The Bible says the following in Romans 13, 1 and following. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to ex execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. There are consequences for doing what you want. Therefore, con there are consequences for not practicing self-control. There are consequences when we look at the Christian life and we begin to just do things when we feel like it. God wants us to do things in the right way. God wants us to have rule over our own spirit. God wants your life to be, have a strong foundation. The Bible says, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. You will not be overcome by the wicked one. You will not be overcome. You will not fall in your Christian life if you do these things, if you follow after righteousness, if you yield to God and obey him, if you do what the word of God tells you to do, if you practice self-control and allow God to take control in your life, then you'll be able to press forward in the Christian life. You have that choice to control yourself and do no wrong. But you have to make the right choice and obey. God then will protect you. He will help you. He'll guide you. If you consider him and obey him, then you will become a beautiful city. But if you do as you wish and only as you want and become lazy in the Christian walk in your life, you'll be that Christian whose walls crumble. And others will come by saying, what happened here? What happened in this person's life? They say that they serve God. Look at their life. Look at what has occurred in their life. All these things hinge on a simple truth of whether or not we practice self-control and we can have control over our spirit or if we just do whatever we want. And God wants us to have that control. And that control is found in simply yielding to him. Go to him in prayer. Read the Bible. Obey the word of God. Do these things daily. Do it with diligence. It's very easy and it's very quick for that moment in time to come where we slip up and we fall just because we didn't pray, we didn't read, we got busy in life. We need to have control over our own spirit and do what God wants us to do in order to be that Christian that God wants us to be. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Again, Lord, I thank you for your word and the simple truth that we find in Proverbs here. Lord, I pray you'd help each and every one of us to be that city that we need to be, that has built the walls, that stands firm on a solid foundation, and that foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray you'd help each and every believer here, Lord, to focus on you, to consider you, lest they faint in their minds, considering him who endured such contradiction of sinners. Lord, help us to be like you and help us to focus on you in all that we do. Lord, you're just waiting for us and you're, you're there to help us each and every step of the way. And I pray you'd help us to re be reminded of that. Again, Lord, I just pray again, if there's someone in our midst, Lord, they don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, I pray that this would be the night they come to trust in you so that they can begin this life of following you and building their city. Again, I just pray in each and every aspect, the Lord, that you're glorified. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing one hymn for the benediction this evening. Hymn number 500. Hymn number 500. And if you're able, let's stand together as we sing, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. Hymn number 500.
When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saint of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Verse number three. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. The roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. And the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen again. Thank you for coming. You are dismissed. Hey, it's Pastor Burns again. Thank you so much for watching our live stream today. Before you leave, I wanna ask you an important question. You know, I believe anytime you hear the word of God,